Hey friends, Dustin here. You're watching the Life of Lynn channel. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Today we are back on the $2,800 massive Jayco Eagle we picked up out of a field that's been sitting for five years, pretty much abandoned and full of rodents. So we are working on fixing this thing up, hoping to get some value out of it. Uh, obviously sweat labor, good thing. Remodeling the whole inside, fixing up the outside, doing the roof. We've already put $1,400 worth of new tires on this thing, so she's gonna be ready to roll as soon as I finish this remodel. Where are we at on the remodel? Well, I've got two videos out already, so check those out. I post them up there somewhere. And uh, let's take a look at where we left off last time. All right, as of last time, it's pretty much gutted. Not a lot left in here. Still got some of the kitchen cabinets, but uh, we're gonna be just cleaning and painting those. Um, back here, full disassembly of the bathroom. Nothing left. We're doing that here soon. And here's the bunk room. All new bunk beds installed, painted. Everything's good there. Got to finish up a little cabinet there. Uh, got a nice little desk finish that way. So we're in the stage of uh, finishing up with paint and we're going to be finishing up our built-ins doing a coffee bar here with a tv and a fireplace and stuff and a little light fixture up at the top gonna look really cool finishing up in the bedroom slide as well but an important thing came today and that's where i'm starting this is our new power converter it's from rec pro it was honestly one of the cheapest ones i have not used them for a power converter yet uh, i typically stick with intellipower because they use pretty high quality parts but Here's the problem. When we first picked this thing up, we hooked this thing up to a cord in order to power up the battery system to bring the slide outs in and it worked fine. But now that it's been in the shop for a couple weeks here, we no longer have battery charging ability. So our power converter is fried, which is pretty common. Uh, if you don't know what the power converter is on your camper, that is the part that is actually right here on this one. It takes the 110 volt AC power from when you plug in your camper and uh, converts that over to 12 volt DC power to power all your 12 volt circuits. And in RVs, there's a lot of 12 volt circuits. That's typically gonna be all your indoor and outdoor lights. That's also gonna be your furnace. That's going to be the controller for your thermostat and for the electronic ignition on your gas water heater. That's pretty much most of it. Uh, all your outlets and the air conditioner and everything run off the AC. But you can go a long time without having to be hooked up to power if you got enough batteries and you have one of these to charge those batteries. So this little guy is gonna be replacing that old one there. I'm gonna clean up some of this wiring and do that, but we're gonna to have to disconnect the batteries and the 110 volt that's hooked up right now because I have to get in there and wire this. So it's gonna be dark in here. Decided to go ahead and cut the entire bottom part of this cabinet off. First of all, there was some water damage on this trim down here towards the bottom. Uh, so I just cut that off. We'll come in here and reframe this later. Also, this gives us a ton more room. And look at all the wires down there. Yay! Okay, great. All right, got it all wired up. Ran the battery cables here to the back of our uh, power distribution for the 12 volt side. Over here, I got the power converter wired up to a 110 volt circuit and over there. So should be good to go. Everything looks decent. So plug the battery back in and uh, then plug in the camper, see what happens. All right, camper's plugged in. Got the multimeter out. All right, this 12 volt lug right here at the bottom, that should be our hot coming right off the power converter. Oh, 14.7, we got charge voltage. Now over here at the battery lug, there we go. So now the batteries are actually charging. You can tell they were quite low because we're running 14.7, that's a little hot. So that's uh, definitely thinks they're pretty low. But uh, now we got functioning power converter. I think I put it in a pretty good spot. Maybe I can cut a little vent in the future front piece here. Um, give that a little airflow. It lasts a lot longer if they got the airflow, guys. I'm just, just letting you know now. All right, wiring is pretty much almost sorted in this thing. So it's time to get back to the remodel project. We're hitting the bathroom. Uh, this is, this is gonna be awkward. Let's let's see if I can move it. I mean, it's nice looking. That's that's for sure. But I'm gonna have to bring it over here. And well, the sink touches the wall, so that means I need a weird measurement off this thing. Yeah. It comes to about there where that screw is. Okay. Now we know. It's gonna look nice uh, once that's over there. 
We'll have a small toilet here, a shower pan over here. That'll be about two square feet to stand in. Now, since it does have a second bedroom, they obviously sacrificed some space somewhere. That space had to be the bathroom, I guess. Okay, well, we'll do what we can. I'm gonna start over here and build the platform for our shower pan first. Um, that way, that'll give me the measurement I need to build a raised floor piece this way. That way I'm not guessing. Okay, so we'll kind of do it all at once. Also, I'm gonna have to cut these three wires here. That's one of our 110 lines, probably going to that outlet and another one somewhere. And um, I need to run this straight down so I can run it underneath the floor with the plumbing. And there's, there's no slack. That's, she's just, you know, she's dangling. So we're gonna cut that, uh, disconnect the power real quick. Cut that, drop that down, extend it by, I don't know, a foot or two. I'll add more wiring in there, splice it all back together, tape it up so it goes down underneath the floor. And uh, then we'll start on the two by twos. Okay, I got everything pulled out of here and uh, getting ready to do some pecs. If you guys have never used pecs before for plumbing, stuff's amazing. Basically, you need two tools, you need a nice cutter to cut square and clean, and you need your crimper. So that's, that's about it. Get all these little guys here with your clamps. Got all different kinds of fittings. Uh, RVs almost always use half inch, so that's what I have a whole lot of. You know, track bite. Uh, they're a little pricey. There's some Chinese ones you can get on the internet that seem to be just as good. That's these ones here. Uh, you got scrapes, you got elbows, you got tees. You can get about anything you want. Uh, pick your flavor. So we're going to do a T here and a T here so we can run a hot and cold line here and straight up through the bottom of our sink. Uh, that'll go that way. This T here will run this way. We'll then cut it again. Do a T here so hot and cold comes across up into the wall for the shower and then the other side of that T is going to go to our kitchen sink which I just realized is kind of an issue because I realized that I did not mark those pipes. They're both white over here, I know this is the cold side because that's where the toilet is. So that's cold, and I have no idea which one of those is supposed to be cold. Oh, that's fun. I guess I'll figure that out, and um, we'll start doing some pecs here. Well, guys, it is getting close to summertime out there. Everything's green, and uh, I got a fan on today because it's uh, she's going to be 80 for the first time. So that's fine. Anyway, cutting some ABS here, uh, getting the plumbing drain set up for the shower and the sink that's in the bathroom there. Um, got everything kind of cut and put together so far. Uh, just started gluing. So let's um, see where we're at. I'm trying to get this bathroom done. This thing has been taking a lot longer than it should be. You know, just because it's a small space doesn't mean you don't have as many you know, cuts and runs and pieces. It's still a full bathroom in here. Sorry for the fan noise. Okay, everything has been put together. I've got our little risers back in here. All the PEX tubing has fittings, has been crimped. We're working on the ABS drains. Here's the one that's gonna go to the sink. I'm gonna do a 10 inch riser up through the floor here. Um, that should connect to our inch and a quarter P-trap that's underneath that. Uh, over here, I gotta build this still. Um, this is kind of a cool P-trap. It's not huge, it's flat. And it drains down there through the shower, goes through some ribs, and then there's like a, a latex bubbler thing that floats in there, that way water can't come back with gases. You know, it's, it's basically a P-trap. But this saves us a ton of room, and we no longer have to use this giant hole in the floor that went all the way down to the underlayment underneath the camper. So, this guy is gonna sit right here. I'm just gonna have some two 90s angled just slightly so we can get it up to the level we need it at and uh, that should be, be good for us to go. So once I get all this done it's time to put the plywood back in, screw all this down and um, get ready to do flooring, finish the paintwork and cover this mess up up here. But it's looking good so far. All right guys it's the next day. You know time it takes it takes a minute. And I decided that if I made this video about just 
remodeling the bathroom and it's gonna be four hours long. So, there it is. Just cut a bunch of pine boards down, stained with early American 230. Got our sink installed here, toilets back in, trim's done, floors in, medicine cabinet. One thing I need to do is I'm gonna put a mirror right here because um, we're gonna cover up this spot. I did hang this over here to cover it, um, but it stuck out this far, which made this sink useless. Right now, that works, okay? So we're gonna do that. A little towel rack thing that's going in right here. Uh, toilet paper holder, that sort of thing. And then here's the shower stall. Built that all out of galvanized metal. Pretty cool. Got a couple little details I gotta touch up. Got some caulking to do. But all in all, bathroom's pretty much 100% done, which is exciting because this is one of the, the biggest projects of this build was, was just this little bathroom and redoing all the plumbing. Um, basically, where we're at now uh, is going to be doing flooring. Got to finish a couple things back there and ugh, paint and kitchen still. So I'm saving this huge area for last. I'll get that bedroom finished up, this one finished up. Bathroom's already done, and then we'll start working our way forward. Uh, so the next thing, uh, I jumped on the roof because I was going to do the roof vent for the bathroom because it's got a brand new power fan in it. It's one of the big ones. And um, remembered that, oh, that air conditioner up there, yeah, pretty sure it needed a blower motor. So I did hook up the thermostat and uh, the breaker down there for it. And sure enough, blower motor is not spinning. You just have a really large amperage draw that you can hear. Kind of noise and uh, there is zero motion in it. Sometimes that can be because of your hard start capacitor that's up there. Um, this one is actually physically hard to turn by hand, so the motor is shot. I got to get that fixed before I can even see if the compressor works because I clicked it on compressor, all the lights blinked, there's a loud pop noise outside. I don't know, everything's still working, but it, it was scary, so I went ahead and shut it down. We'll have to get that fixed too. So, since I'm up on the roof, well, let's uh, go ahead and take care of a couple of those things. Get that new roof vent installed so we can vent some of the paint fumes and um, we'll keep working. Okay, old AC is loosely set over the hole and I've spent the last two hours cleaning and rebuilding it with used parts. So let's see if it works. All right, fan on. Nope. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but... Okay. Just replace the uh, capacitors up there. I, you know, probably just gonna have to replace the air conditioner. Let's find out. Dang it. Come on. Peace toast. That was the only spare motor I had that would work in this unit, so. And I don't even know if the unit's even good. I don't know if the compressor even works, so. Hey, or if it has a charge. Looks like I'm gonna have to make a small investment here since I've already gotten to the point of, you know, doing this much. Should probably have a good working air conditioner. Well, guys, it's about 2300 and uh, putting in a late night on this one. Uh, you know, we're behind schedule, per usual. That happens. I've been saying two weeks for about two months now. So we're actually down to the last week, and uh, I've been throwing stuff together here. Let's, let's get a little update here because, uh, you know, camera hasn't been on because time crunch time is activated. Here's that abandoned tabletop I found on the side of the road. It's already mounted. It's gonna be a new coffee bar here. We're getting ready to put in the outlets and the thermostat. Built a little two by two wall piece here so we can hide all the wiring. Speaking of which, there it is up there. Gonna hang a nice little light right from the middle of that. Probably put uh, an electric fireplace right here. That's gonna look real nice. This is like 20 year old cedar planks from a fence. Had a stack of them out back. Wow, those look great, actually. Uh, need to sand on this a little bit more. I just kind of scratched the surface right here. You can see, and then put that uh, dark stain we've been using. Need to sand all the yellow out. Where am I gonna make it all like 
this corner here. Looking pretty good. Heck of a coffee bar. Got enough room in the bottom here for the furnace. We're going to have a access panel right here, uh, air intake, and then there's going to be probably two big ducts right here with blowers on them. Maybe one on the side blowing towards the door. This one here goes to the bedroom. And of course, we've abandoned the in floor heat because mice are disgusting. It's all packed with closed cell foam now. Slide out is painted. Here's the nice blue color we've chosen for the cabinets. Got some lights in. Look at that. LED. Kind of modern farmhousey something. I don't know. Looks good though. This one's installed as well. Look at that. Beautiful. Went with like a silver on the slide out walls. The main walls are still going to be this light tan. Bathroom, of course, looking stellar. Going to bring that all the way out here as well. Kind of blend this whole thing together. So that's kind of where we're at tonight. I'm going to try to make some more progress. Still got to finish with the primer and everything just so we can finish painting. We literally have a week left before I promised my little girl that she could take this thing to the lake. And um, yeah, so I'm going to set it up for all our friends for a little birthday party. It's going to be a good time, but I am... I am really behind. Look, I, this is the slide out. It's not even assembled. This is just a giant nothingness. Nothing's attached. So I gotta finish the slide out, put some flooring across that so I can reassemble the actual mechanism for the bed that brings the slide out in and out. Friends, what you see behind me is a 1986 Four Winds Horizon 170 with a small block 350 Chevrolet. I paid a mere $2,000 for this boat. And yeah, I know that's one of the 500 boats I usually buy, but uh, this one runs. She's got a good Yeah, that's a Well, alrighty friends, it's a few days later and I ended up taking this rig to the lake for a little pre-finished test here. I had a spot reserved, needed to go get a boat in the water. So we went ahead and took it even though it's not finished, but that also gave me a chance to test some of these untested systems and uh, see how good we've done so far. Now, of course we're still behind schedule because that's always what happens with these jobs, but we've come quite far. Bedroom back here is pretty much finished. Got to touch up some of the trim, do a couple things here and there. You'll notice the foil in the windows. It was 102 degrees out, and even though I put a brand new air conditioner on the roof, it was struggling to maintain a cool temperature in here. Although after we got it cooled off by about 6 a.m., it kind of maintained a little bit the next day. But that first day was a little rough when we took it out there and it was that hot. Uh, <clears throat> 95% of the paintwork is done. I've got to do a little touch up in these areas here. I've got to do some trim work. I also have to get these cabinet doors sanded and painted to match. We will get those on as soon as we can. Bathroom is probably 98% done. This is all trimmed out. Need a mirror right here. This is all looking great over here. Sink. We've got our vanity. Got a custom wood rack here. We've got this surround. Gonna add a um, toilet paper holder and that mirror. And just a touch up of a little caulking and she'll be basically ready to go. Shower's all in, that looks great. Uh, during our systems test, we did realize that the toilet was leaking. Uh, so we basically didn't have any fresh water. We were running out of, you know, five gallon jugs all weekend. No big deal. I will get the plumbing fixed on the toilet. Our plumbing we did to the toilet and to the sink was all perfect. None of that leaked. That was all good. So that is very good. Uh, paint work is done back here in this corner. Kitchen, we did get our refrigerator installed. I've got a little bit of paint work here and just a nice piece of trim to go around it to hold it in. Well, because it was about two inches smaller than the original RV fridge. 
but without all the RV stuff on it, without the gas absorption unit and the propane burner in the back, this fridge is actually bigger on the inside than the RV unit. Uh, we'll be able to run this off of solar pretty easily. Um, this worked great. So we'll trim this out. We're gonna do some stuff up here. Uh, Kim wanted to change this up. This seems like useless storage. Um, so we might have some things mounted up there that pull out and do some crazy stuff. Made a modification to the air conditioner, added another duct that blows down and sideways, um, along with the back and forward vents. That uh, seemed to help as well. Slide out, still needs trim. Slide out is painted, electrical's done, lights look fantastic in here. We've got to build furniture still. Um, I have a fold out couch here with a bed that'll be going in after I get the floor finished. Flooring, flooring's bad. We're like at 30% on the flooring, but we'll get that knocked out. But this is starting to look pretty good back here. We'll have a nice little dinette, fold out couch, maybe a small table. <clears throat> and that's gonna bring the slide out around. Get the floors finished up through here. We did get all the power stuff redone. So that is all good. Got to do a couple pieces of trim around that and make that look good. Didn't have propane this weekend. Didn't get all the appliances hooked back up. Um, no big deal. We cook outside almost all the time. The microwave did work just to try it out. We, we used it once, so that was good. Uh, plumbing up here, that was solid. I'm gonna ditch the uh, ugly white faucet. We're gonna go with a high handled black one um, with the sprayer attached. Just kind of class it up a little bit. Kim actually wants to go with the black sink. I don't know on the black sink. I think I'd probably go stainless to try to bring the black with the stainless that we already have. Uh, you know, cabinet doors still need to be sanded and painted up here. Got a lot to do, but the coffee bar piece turned out really cool. The wood's great because it's cedar. And since it's been just sitting outside, it's added a ton of really cool colors to it. I like it. It's real wood and I'm repurposing it. Uh, same thing with this countertop here for the coffee bar. We did try out the uh, set power fridge this weekend. Guys, you gotta get one of these. This is my second one now. This thing is absolutely amazing. It runs on 12 volts. Uh, you can hook it up to your solar battery pack or your solar battery bank and charger. Um, it can work off a cigarette lighter or it has an adapter to plug into your 110 volt wall outlet. It uses very little energy. I think about 50 or 60 watts when the compressor's on. And when the compressor's off, it's, it's hardly pulling anything, like less than a watt. Um, really impressed with this. It has two compartments. Um, they can either both be refrigerators or both be freezers or one a fridge and one a freezer, whatever you want. It had a ton of room. We had all our drinks and fruit in this and we had all our main food um, and stuff in the other fridge there. This was nice to keep outside for the kids for drinks. So they weren't going in and out of the camper that we were trying to keep cool. And even at 101 degrees, this thing worked fantastic. Um, set Power went ahead and sent me a link for these guys. so. I will put it down in the description. I highly recommend it if you're a person that goes camping, RVing, uh, you got an off-road adventure rig. They also make rails for these to slide out of the back of your Jeeps and your trucks and stuff. Very cool unit, highly recommend. Uh, after that was tested, we got a couple other things. I didn't worry about getting the propane stuff done because the furnace is still not cleaned and rebuilt. That is something I need to do, but temperature is too hot for that, guys. Um, I do have some new switches going in on the wall over here. Those are gonna, you know, nicen this up. Get rid of the old yellow plastics. We'll have black switches. That'll look pretty good. Got a little bit of trim left over the door and I'm building a mirrored cabinet here. It's just a little thin guy so we can hang stuff up in it. Uh, and then down at the bottom, there will be a stool or a fold up chest, if you will. That way you can put your shoes in it. Um, so we'll get that done. Finish the flooring there. Master bedroom, it's like 90%. That's, it's pretty good. We uh, sealed and caulked everything. We did all the paint work up here. We did the flooring up here, which looks great. That's gonna look really good throughout the whole unit. Um, slide out has been reassembled and the queen size bed is in it. We got, oh, well, we got a couple things we got left to do. Got to build closet doors. Uh, we got to sand and paint, of course. Those cupboard doors there, and of course the dresser drawers down there. I think we're gonna put some butcher block counter on here with a little extended piece, um, so I have a place to sit and work on the computer uh, if I happen to be editing videos while we're out camping. But that 
is the master bedroom. The lights turned out really cool. I do like the color combo with the silver inset inside the slide outs, make it feel bigger. You got kind of a soft sand colored around it. And then of course, that humble-ish, grayish, bluish color for the cabinets. Um, yeah, Kim picked out the colors. I think, honestly, guys, they look great in here. And I can't wait to get this thing finished up. So one more episode and this thing will be a two bedroom condo on wheels. We bought for only $2,800. Yes, I've got several thousand wrapped up into it now, but we're still way below value for a comparable unit nowadays. So even if I end up with nine or 10,000 total into this, it's gonna be way less than a 30, 40, 50, $90,000 fifth wheel of a comparable size nowadays. And it's gonna be the colors we want and just for us and unique. Nobody else will have one just like this. So I'm super excited guys. So close. Next episode on this thing, it'll be finished and I'll give you guys a full walkthrough. And um, we'll just do a quick little time lapse from start to the end. Uh, for me guys, I gotta get back to work. I've picked up two more campers that I gotta flip while I'm still working on this one. And well, I got my work cut out for me. I appreciate all of you guys. You guys watching the videos, hitting the like button and dropping a comment and being subscribed to the channel means the world to me and it helps me a bunch. I get out there and more people watch the videos and that means I like to make more videos because more people are watching them. That's how it works. So I appreciate you guys. God bless each and every one of you guys. I will see you in the next episode. Temperature, and I'll do a full throttle run.